Thank you. Uh, Jinan, would you like to add anything or answer that question? Sure, I really want to echo what both Monica and Mabwana said. I agree with all of those points and definitely we need to take a comprehensive approach and I definitely believe that education is just one small piece of the puzzle. And I know this is a common narrative when it comes to what needs to be done in terms of um, helping people to make better food choices. It's a common thing that I hear that oh, we need to educate the public. And it's you know particularly common when you um, look at what some of the businesses are saying, you know, those that are um, selling food or drink that are not so healthy, you know, the sugar sweetened beverages. Oftentimes this is the the narrative that people need to be informed and we are you know providing these food items and everybody should go ahead and use their knowledge to make a healthy choice. But what we know is that the healthy choice is not the easy choice currently. And what we need really um, is changes in policy to limit the availability of some of these items to perhaps make changes in the policy with regards to advertising so that underserved communities can, will not be targeted and um, limit the advertising generally when it comes to some of these unhealthy foods. So there are a whole host of policy changes that we need to make changes to our food environment, in addition, of course, to providing people education. I think education is important, but it's a small part of what we need to do. Okay, thank you. I do see in the chat there's a question for Monica, <laughs> um, but I think this goes beyond just your program. We do want to hear about your program, but I think we all could use this information. So how are you able to improve your program completion and retention as you refined your project? Oh, well, it took a lot of manpower, a lot of a lot of following up a lot more, I think, than what we had anticipated. I think the increase dollar, the voucher quantities, we started with twenty four dollars for three months and then we moved up to fifty dollars for six months. I think that was a um a motivator, but I also think, um, you know, our team did such a great job at building a strong relationship with participants and reminding them, you know, that they have vouchers that can be picked up, etc. Um, you know, yeah, so I, th I think it was that and some of the qualitative findings we found is that the participants, um, they liked when they showed up, there was not a line to wait in, there was an appointment for them. And so some, how smooth things were operating made it feel easy to participate. And even the farmers market vendors themselves were welcoming to their vouchers. They, you know, the voucher dollar amounts, if they were $5 dollar amounts and the person was spending $4, the farmers would help them to figure out what they could get for a dollar to maximize their voucher. So I think just the general kind of welcoming, you know, feeling also really helped, whereas probably in the very first cohort, things are still kind of, we're learning and training. And um, and so I think as we've just refined the program, um, it's really made it more appealing for participants. Great, thank you. So I, I do have another question, but I did want to stop for a second. I did say that people could put questions in the chat, but does anyone want to open up their mic and ask a question? Just want to give everybody the opportunity to do that. Um, quick question for Jinan um, about your proposed project that you're working on right now. Are you mapping just the existence of these assets or are you also looking at um, community perspectives and uptake of those assets at the same time? Yeah, we are looking at both. So in our interviews with parents, we're going to be trying to understand the um, resources that they might be using that would relate to helping their child maintain a healthy weight. So definitely it will be both trying to understand what exists and what people are currently using. Thanks. Any other questions? As we've been on Zoom a really long time, I'm really trying to practice the long pause, give people a chance to jump in. Okay, I don't see anyone, but still feel free to jump in or, or put your question in the chat. Um, so 
I know the immediate answer to this question for all three of you is going to be funding and or capacity. So if we could put those two things to the side, even though they are huge barriers, um, are there any other major specific barriers to expanding your work and, and what you're trying to do with your project? And anyone can jump in if anyone has an, an answer at the top of their, their tongue, tip of their tongue. I know I took the two big ones off the table. That wasn't fair. <laughs> Anything maybe from the audience, you know, your participant side or the community in general, or sorry, Mapuana, I see you were gonna jump in. No, I was just gonna thank you for this question. Um, and that even though you said, aside from funding and capacity, I do just wanna take some time. First and foremost, that's an opportunity for me to thank some of our funding sources of the past, including Ola Hawaii and um, the Pico Pilot Projects that helped to really roll out some of our Ke Ola Oka Aina work. In fact, it was so um, endorsed by community, we actually found additional funds to open our survey to more people to really get that broad perspective across the Pai Aina of Hawaii. And even though we have a lot of these proposed recommendations and solutions, I think some of the things you already pointed out, things like capacity, things like funding, these are really important topics and conversations because to really see things um, be sustained, it really requires a long-term investment. And I think that's um, part of the barriers that sometimes comes up because even though we're looking to the future and trying to develop these really long-term solutions. There are some immediate things that occur. COVID was a great example of this in the way in which it makes us pause and reset and think about the priorities that are very immediate while also trying to address the long-term type of solutions. And so I think that really alludes to the idea of funding and capacity, but also the amount of time that it truly takes to see that perpetuated change that we wanna see in our food systems. And so sometimes even just learning about um, our la'au or our mala or our, our overall food systems, the way in which water has been diverted and could potentially be diverted back. And all of this though takes time. And I think that's one of the things that's of the essence mm -hmm. um, that has really been reinforced um, recently in the past few years. Thank you. And uh, Monica or Jinan, anything you wanted to add? Anything other than those two big things in your way? Those are such big things. No, <laughs> I think, you know, the opportunity to learn and share, right? Because there are so many different um, medical providers and healthcare um, organizations that I think are really interested. They hear about these produce prescription, they hear about food as medicine, but just having opportunities to learn and share from, um, you know, about how the nitty gritties of how this works in one community and helping and support to adapt. I guess that, that might sound like capacity, I guess, but, um, mm -hmm. but I do think just, you know, that that opportunity to learn and share from one another about, you know, what works in one community might be different in another, but at least to share some kind of highlights amongst each other to, I think, kind of take a little bit of the fear away, maybe of like, oh, I don't know if I can do this program.